Today's helpful how-to video is going to be on changing your front valve cover on your Mitsubishi Endeavor. This includes front spark plugs. All going to be on today's video. No, I'm not much on intros. So if you find this video helpful, be sure to drop a comment. Uh, leave a like and show your support for my channel by smashing that subscribe button. So let's start the adventure. The first thing you want to do, it's the easiest. Just go ahead and change the front valve cover first get it out of the way you can mark your coil packs here but the coil packs it really don't matter which way they go once you get your plug-ins the way it should be and the way this cable runs if you can tell you can't get it mixed up so go ahead and unplug your coil packs you just mash down here and as i said you can mark these with tape or however you want to it just mashes down and pulls out it's real hard to do one-handed so i'm gonna go ahead and unplug these so once you get your front three core packs uh, unplugged, you can go ahead and remove this. Now, you want to disconnect your battery just to be safe. And these core packs can be quite tight. And I can't break this one-handed, especially with such a long socket because it's trying to tilt. So you want to set the camera back down and loosen these out. So once you get your 10 millimeter bolts out of the top of the core, They pull straight up, and if you notice, I do got a bad oil leak. This is filled up, and my boot stayed on that one, so we got to fish that out once we get the valve cover off. It's common for that to happen. Don't panic if it does. The boots just flip on and off of these. Quite simple to change them. Now, this is the easy part. That's the reason I say go ahead and do the front one first. That way you can get everything out of the way and you don't have that valve cover open. You don't lose bolts or dirt down in it. That's how come I always like changing the front one first. So go ahead and take the rest of your bolts out. Which would be right here on this cable. And then you got this cable right here and that just pulls loose just like so you got a bracket here but you do not have to remove this but you can remove that bracket on the corner here if you want to to give you a little bit more room with the valve cover it is not needed this is not needed to move any more than this right here and you do got a little line it just pulls off just like so easy and simple now you got a bolt here and a bolt here. You need to take those to just move this out of the way just a little because this is part of your valve cover and this actually pushes into it. So you definitely got to take that loose. And once you get that, does that bracket I was talking about, you can leave. You need to undo this hose too. Should be self-explanatory. You just move this cramp back, pull it back. Now, once you get that, it's time to loosen one two three four five six valve cover bolts and they 10 millimeters too everything you need to do to this front valve cover is 10 millimeter i've been using just this normal quarter inch ratchet and 10 millimeter socket so i'm going to go ahead and take these loose another thing when you're doing this for the first time and you got a new vehicle maybe as you can see this valve train is very clean on this uh endeavor which is a good thing. On down here is a rubber boot. We need to remove that boot. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, it's very easy to get out. That's a boot pretty much right here. So we're gonna set this aside and we'll reassemble everything. This is what causes that. These rubber O-wings, that's right here. They sell replacements, we got replacements for us. But yeah, they go bad, and they just, you know, they, they pretty well uh, leak. And this had this done once before, and you can see somebody's used silicone right through here. Now, we're going to take a rag, clean up all this mating surface right through here. We want it as clean, all free as we can get it. 
you can use some brake clean if you have to but most of the time if you got a well maintained engine you can pretty well just take a rag and just clean everything up maybe a a, a scotch bright a little piece of scotch bright or something like that works wonders so i'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and i'll show you how to assemble your new valve cover and we'll go from there so first thing we want to do is remove our old gasket here and somebody used silicone on this once once before and now silicone's good to hold stuff on but it's pretty well useless on situations like this but i can see the reason they used it it's a little bent right here but some people do have to help hold the gasket on and uh i'm trying to get this off now which makes it more the gasket give the next mechanic a pain in the ass to get this off so let's go ahead and jump to the garments and i'll show you i will tell you this much guys these guys right here should not be hard to get out but somebody still comes them in they're gonna be a pain in the ass as you can see they're painting my ass because mostly RTV mechanic I use RTV I can't talk but I wouldn't use it on a a valve cover garment I guess all right one come off quite clean these guys right here is actually part of your core packs you can buy these little boot kits with these come with a spring and a new end you might as well get one of these because somebody did this before they're going to silicone them to the gasket and ain't going to be no good when you pull them out i had to order six of those i went to my local advance auto and they got me the whole set for like 30 bucks you can't beat that deal six new boots to finish this job now somebody silicone this before and I have been cleaning this up with some brake clean, a wire brush, and I've been at it for about an hour. And I'm still going to have to use some uh, silicone in some spots because it's bent right here from the previous guy who installed these. And uh, yeah, just on the safety thing. If I had time, I'd try to source out a different valve cover. But yeah, we need to get this car back going. And that way really ain't too big of a deal. Just a lot colder silicone, guys. Don't go crazy with it. I'll show you how to do that. Just stay tuned. Let's go on to the spot plugs. Now, this is your spot plug tubes. And as I said before, usually when those go bad, you got oil filled up on these. And, uh... It's just something very common. You turn this light on. And that's oil, guys. We ain't got much oil on this side. None on this side. But this one on the end here was leaking pretty bad. And uh, to get that out before you pull your plug, just stick you a piece of rag down in there with something with your plug in it. And just soak all that oil up best you can. Because if you don't, when you remove that, all the dirt and the grime will go down into your piston. Well, it shouldn't hurt it, but you you know, you don't want it though. And it will cause a smoke when you first start it. So clean all that up the best you can. And uh, then uh, remove your spot plugs one by one and change them out. Now it should not be in there super tight. And you do not want to put them back in there super tight because you can strip the treads. And if you strip the head, then yeah, you're in for a bad time. So, this is a special spot plug socket I'm using. It's got a rubber gasket in it. It did have. Shit! It's still on the plug. I ain't how that special socket supposed to work. Ha! There we go, guys. And uh, this one did have a little oil on it, but let's compare the old plug to the new plug, shall we? And see how the gap looks. But if you look, we can see the actual top of the piston. And uh, this engine's running 
very good. They ain't no carbon build up on it, which is a good thing. So whoever did the last uh, spot plug change job on either the front or the back, hopefully they ain't got a hold of the back, but they put a auto light exterior performance in it. And uh, the difference between iridium and spot plug like that is the wear time. Now, I don't know when these were put in there, but you see the gap? Let's see if you can compare them. That will give you engine trouble, bad fuel mileage, uh, weak performance. It's, it's just awful, guys, that people will do that. And it looks like they actually try to gap it. It's been bent that way. And when you bend them, it actually damages that if you ain't got the right tool to bend them with. I actually checked these gaps on these before I even, you know, uh, went to put them in. I actually always check all my gaps. And uh, the gaps is perfect on these. This is iridium. And, uh, you know, they they good plugs. The plugs is expensive, but on jobs like this, you don't want to cheap out on your spot plugs because I would do this once every 100,000 miles. Yeah, it's, it's, I wouldn't even put these in this. The part number I'm using is right there if you are interested in the same plug that I'm running, the NGKs. They're not cheap, as I said before, and this is not where you want to cheap out. So I'm going to be installing this the same way. I'm going to pre-take it. Well, I need to wipe that off. Oops. Another note to self guys, check, make sure your spot plug is not damaged anywhere. Cause sometimes in factory you can get the pore strung cracked and that can cause you problems. Just double check everything. This looks very good. So we're gonna go ahead and install it. Same way we took the other one out. And do not over tighten this. And it should go in easy. You don't want to cross thread it neither. Should be able to screw it down by hand to it's snug and then just finish tightening it up. Now I'm sure it's got a torque spec on this. Uh, I ain't using it. I'm just snugging it up. Just like so. But you can check and see what the torque spec says. And uh, I actually might go back over these with a torque wrench. Once I get them changed. So I'll let you know if I do that. I'm going to go ahead and change the other tree first though. So I went ahead and torqued these with my torque wrench. They torque at 18 foot pounds. The spot plugs do. Uh, that's 213 inch pounds. If you got it in inch pound torque wrench. The spot plug gap on these is 32. They got on these NGKs. 2832 is what I found these call for. But the factory ones is around 44 gap. But I don't know if Mitsubishi changed that recommendations later on, and that's how come that or NGK didn't. But I'm going to leave mine at the factory uh, NGK recommendation of 32. Uh, Reasons for this is because it'll wear down over time. It might give you more life in your plug. And, uh, you know, on these older engines, actually less wear on your coils too with not having that big wider gap. It counts as reasons. And uh, the other people it's installed the same plugs as I'm installing here. And uh, they ain't gapped them to 44 and do just fine. Many reasons. Now, I know I said about silicone, but I'm going to put a little bit on the inside of this lip here. And just a little bit right here. Uh, probably just on that. And just a little because you don't want it in your oil pan. And uh, which can be a bad thing. So, what I'm using is white stuff, one minute gasket. Works great. If you don't want it to leak, use this. But you see what I'm doing here? I'm just going around the top of this, just a little. And if you get any where you don't want it, a little brake clean can clean that actually up pretty easy. So. Now, as I said before, you want a light coat. 
and a lot colder seal come what we did we didn't go crazy with it now it's just smashes straight down on this just like so now you need to do the rest of them the same way and uh clean any excess seal come off real good and then we go on to the valve cover so I went ahead and cleaned all the silicone off this and uh, sprayed it with brake cream. Got this nice and clean. The next step will be putting your gasket in it. Now you can use silicone here too. I don't recommend it, but this guy's done used it and hit scashed it up a little. So I'm going to put a little bit on the upper edge of my gasket. Just a thin, light coat. And uh, another tip. This little groove, that's the bottom of your gasket, so it'll set in just like so. And if you put this gasket in, and it's bunching up here, like so, that's how it sets. Now I'm going to show you another thing. You can try to put it in this way. And if you notice, it's too short. So uh, you, don't, you shouldn't have to stretch it or anything. It should just fit in here super smooth. Then you just can clamp these just a little to help hold it in. Let me go ahead and get this silk home just a little. And then uh, I'll show you how to do that. So anyway, now I'm going to coat just the outer edge of this. Just a little bit with silk home. It helped with them leaks that you see. And uh, my valve cover has been bent by somebody. And just a little bit. You don't want excess on it. Because you don't want it to hang over and get into your oil pump. So you got to be sparing with the silicone if you use it. And that's just a light coat. Now I'm going to do the other two like that and set the valve cover on it. So it's time to install the valve cover. My gasket is on it. I got a thin coat of silicone on it because I don't want it to leak. And uh, this has been a little. So you line your holes back up. Same way it came off. Make sure the gasket stays in place. And then this just fits down here. And as this tightens up, these uh, little gaskets right here uh, snug up. So, pretty easy to do. Make sure everything's good. And now take your 10 millimeter and start the bolts you took out of it. Six of them. When you're tightening down your bolts and start them, you want to go crisscross pattern and snug them up. You don't want to snug them all in a straight line because you can bend it even worse. Whoever did this this one before me, it it's a mess. If I could source out a valve cover today, I would have bought a valve cover. But I straightened this and best I can, cleaned the silicone off of it. We used a little bit of silicone. You know, it'll help it seal. Shouldn't have that leaking problem. Known for Mitsubishi's and gauntlets and stuff. So I'm going to snuggies down and I give you a torque spec afterward if you want to torque them down. If not, you know, you can just snug them. Ain't very high. So since I torqued the spot plugs, I'm going to go ahead and torque the valve covers too. They torque down to 31 inch pounds. Yep, that's very light. So I'm spinning down here to 31 inch pounds. I'm going to torque these sons of guns down. So I torqued these down at 35 because I'm taking into account I got an extension on this. So you got to add it up. It's it's math, you know. And 35 is round about what I figured what it would be for this. Probably give or take probably a little bit more. But oh well, good enough. So now I'm going to spray some brake clean. Uh, put paper towels or something in the new holes. Spray some brake clean on this. Clean this valve cover up really nice. Now, if you do use the same brand of silicone, I know it says one hour you can put it back in service, but it's best to wait six or seven hours. Uh, just let that silicone to harden up, because it does, every now and again, squish out a little on the inside of these valve covers. If you ain't careful, you put too much on it, it will. 
a uh, little ain't gonna affect it but you want it hard enough really good so it don't just veal off and fly off but uh into your oil system so give it proper time to dry and you shouldn't have to worry about any leaks ever again on your valve cover i sprayed this off with brake clean it's drying you can see uh i'm going to go ahead and uh plug my hoses back into it i am not going to install the coils today as i'm waiting on parts because these little shields right here that was silicone down in these actually go on this like so and it sits down and it caps over top of these but your coil goes in pretty much like that you got a boot right here i got replacement boots the kit that comes with these comes with boots and a new spring so i'm just gonna put all new boots and stuff and clean my coils up good that'll be on another video of showing you how to replace your boots and stuff i sure you enjoy that and uh yeah or well, once i get the full video of the back valve cover and everything and i combine videos i include that little section into it so i went ahead and sprayed this off with brake cream it's drying off i went ahead and hooked my two hoses up on the front valve cover it comes off the same they go on the same way they came off i will not be installing the coils but i will show you how i got to pick up a new boot kit because these little dust shields go here was cell combed on and as you've seen they just tore right off so the boot kit's like six dollars from advance auto and it'd be here at true clock tomorrow and look at the cell comb on these coils that's cell comb guys shit <laughs> But they drop down in just like so. Your boat goes here and you can't mess your wiring harness up. It don't matter which coil goes where. As long as the plug-ins for the, you know, actual uh, coil is in the right place. Like you need, if you got number one cylinder, you need number one plug-in. Don't matter about the coil. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. Don't forget, don't forget to put your two bolts back into your timing cover here. You do not want to forget that. You'll be going down the road here, something go ding, 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 ding. You'll be at cover. But uh, this is all I'm going to be doing today. I ain't got time to do the back uh, coil packs and stuff because I don't want my intake off of this and I have to use this car for this week. So the front is all I'm going to be able to get done for a couple of days. So once I get everything done, though, I, I'll be sure to upload a full video in case you're going to do the whole thing yourself and combine it. But uh, till then, I keep uh, this front valve cover. The backing is pretty much the same way once you get the intake off, or if you go, need to go ahead and do that. But I will have a full video on front and back coming soon and how to remove your intake plenium. Go ahead and put the oil cap on it. I'm just going to take my coils in the house, clean them up very good. Wait on my kit to come in at 3 o'clock tomorrow, Vance Auto. Uh, and uh, hook my two hoses back up tonight. I should be able to drive this. So if you found this video helpful, let me know in the comment section below. Drop me a like. Be sure to show your support for the channel by smashing that subscribe button. I appreciate it if you do. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.